Thank you. Well, I want to begin by uh, thanking Mr. Richard Gardenas, who's uh, kept, kept us informed. And Mr. Rick Drew um, at the Canyon Country, um, from the Canyon Country Advisory Board of Directors and the B Board of Directors, as well as the uh, Moose Lodge for, um, for hosting this City Council Candidates Meet and Greet uh, event. I also want to take the time to thank my husband for rearranging his schedule uh, to be here and uh, for taking this long journey with me. So, thank you. Uh, I am Gloria Mercado Fortine, and uh, I'm running for City Council. Uh, as a lifelong resident of the S Santa Clarita Valley, I care deeply about this valley and our city. I attended our local schools, went on to pursue a career as a, as a teacher and counselor and principal and uh, district uh, administrator in the Los Angeles Unified School District. I am currently an education consultant and CEO of Global Education Solutions. As most of you know, my background is education. However, my administrative duties uh, also take me into the world of business. Uh, I supervised 125 schools and oversaw a budget of $125 million per year. I have been actively involved in our community, uh, not only serving on several nonprofit boards, uh, the City and Sheriff's Anti-Gang Task Force, and the City's Committee on Neighborhood Empowerment Safety Team, but also as a public elected, publicly elected official. I have been privileged to serve on the William S. Hart uh, Governing Board for 14 years, uh, and it is the largest full-time employer in the Santa Clarita Valley. As a publicly elected official, I have always tried to base my decisions on doing a careful analysis of the issues and listening to all sides to hopefully find a common ground. I spend a lot of time out in the community talking and listening to people's concerns, desires, and suggestions. As a governing board member and many times as a past board president, I have helped lead the way in the face of hard econo economic times and challenging issues. I want to bring that experience, leadership, and energy to the City Council. Our city faces many issues and, I will continue, and will continue to face countless issues. We need leaders who are experienced, problem solvers, collaborators, who create solutions and who value an inclusive government. Looking ahead to the future of our city, my vision for Santa Clarita is to ensure that it continues to be the most desirable place to work and raise our families. As our city continues to expand, we need to strategically plan for future growth and invest in public infrastructure and city services that meet the needs of all residents across the city, including additional recreational facilities for youth and expanding facilities and services for seniors and veterans, especially in the Canyon Country area. We need to enhance public safety, resources to protect families and neighborhoods and ensure they are safe and free from drugs, gangs, graffiti, and blight. And my time is set. Okay, thank you. And now for our questions segment from the audience. Yes, uh, I'm Todd Hoover again from Castaic. Uh, Gloria, um, if you are elected, are you going to continue to serve on the Hart School Board? No, uh, because uh, both uh, those offices are incompatible. So uh, if I were to be elected on the city council, I would have to resign the uh, school board position. Hi, Gloria, your Hello, turn to answer Sandy. it. How are you? Um, what do you feel are the most important environmental issues facing our city today? Well, I think everybody does agree that uh, CIMEX um, mine is, um, is, uh, is very important. It is major. Uh, it can change if, if that goes in and we're not successful with S SB 771, um, then it is going to change our whole, our whole valley, our whole community. Um, the imba impact can be just a disaster. People won't want to come here. So you're talking about jobs and everything else. Um, it will really destroy um, our quality of life um, and, and really our future. 
Um, so, so CIMEX is, is, is really at the, at the, at the forefront. And, uh, you know, we're all hopeful that it can be resolved legislatively. Uh, there, there will be a hearing, another hearing in, in February. Um, I think our uh, Mayor Keller and, uh, and others represented as well this uh, a couple of months ago. Uh, but now we'll just see how they score, or they're going to score the bill, and uh, and see what what happens from there. But uh, it, it's important. Uh, just very quickly, you know, the, all the school districts we commissioned a study on the impact, the health impact on our kids, and it, it was just devastating, and, and that's when we uh, filed in, in, um, in the records and, and uh, to make sure that, that everybody took that, at least that, in, uh, you know, seriously, uh, what, what that impact was. Lori Rivas. Um, what experience will you bring that qualifies you to sit on the Library Board of Directors? And beyond balancing the books, do you think that listening to constituents is enough information to help provide the checks and balances for recommendations made by a for-profit corporation? Well, uh, what experiences do I bring with skills? Um, I certainly bring a skills of, of doing program evaluation. Uh, we're in a situation now, um, so we have a contractor, and I think it's going to be very important um, that we've contracted with them for so many years that we, we evaluate very closely uh, what the success has been. And yes, you know, as some people have mentioned, there, there seems to be some successful indicators. But uh, really to evaluate the program to see if we're getting the quality of services uh, that we should be getting. And, uh, you know, it, it is great to have local control. Um, and, uh, uh, but uh, it was... Uh, you know, I must say that I, I really had uh, uh, a lot of concerns. Uh, certainly, I knew many of the librarians, uh, and uh, and so my my um, uh, my uh, concerns with it is just the way it was rolled out, uh, with uh, with little involvement and little uh, uh, little public input, or or perhaps not really taking uh, the concerns from the public seriously. Chair Gilmore Newhall. Yes. Here comes a climate change question. <laughs> <laughs> I just wondered where it is on your priority list and how important is it for you that Santa Clarita do more on sustainable energy and get off of fossil fuels as much as we possibly can? Well, I think it's very important. It is the wave of the future. Um, and I think we need to be on it. Uh, so I think it's very important. Let me just tell you some of the things that, uh, obviously, sitting on a board, uh, a school board, we've, we've built many, many facilities. And as we're looking at the construction of those facilities, um, in fact, we're, Hart was the first one to bring in solar, solar panels. Um, and so in our modernization and new construction, uh, you know, we're changing out to lead lighting. So there's much that we can do. Uh, much that we need to do because those uh, resources are not limitless. So, um, uh, so, so we do have to be very much on top of it, looking at new technologies uh, continually, uh, and, and bringing in experts who really do know about those technologies. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Hi, uh, Mike Naum, uh, Canyon Country. I'll ask you another environmental question. Um, how many LEED certified buildings has the Hart District built in the past 10 years? Uh, in the past 10, well, we're just changing out. The, the most recent facilities uh, that we're going to go into, because we're working into the plan, will be Castake High School. Um, the district office has, uh, we've already moved in, in, in that. The others will be, we're taking care of through the modernization. So that's, that is what we're doing, just changing out uh, all of the lighting, putting in lead lighting, and of course that, that, that takes some time, but, um, but that's what we're doing. Are they LEED certified? LEED certified, oh yes. Oh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, let me guess. 
I was just wondering whether you had an opinion as to whether the city of Santa Clarita ought to perhaps um, investigate establishing its own police department. Um, it seems like the, the, the current facility, I don't spend a lot of time in the sheriff's department there at uh, on Valencia Boulevard, <laughs> good. Kevin and Magic Mountain, but it seems like that facility is woefully inadequate. And I was wondering, given the current difficulties that the sheriff's department seems to be having, and be, because Santa Clarita has grown now to be the third, third yes, fourth, largest city, largest third. city mm -hmm. third, whether it might be time for us to investigate, whether it might be time for us to establish our own police department in the Santa Clarita Valley. Absolutely. Uh, you know, obviously we were hoping for a new sheriff's station, and that did not materialize. Um, but uh, they certainly need the facility. And, uh, and there's nothing that to preclude us to, uh, to investigate that to see if that is possible. Obviously, um, cities do that. School districts do that. Um, so, so yes, uh, absolutely. I think, I think that uh, it's proactive of us to take, start investigating and taking a look at that. Uh, at, at the very least, we certainly need another substation um, and uh, perhaps out here in Canyon Country. So, yeah, it's never too, uh, it's never too late, absolutely. Yes. Um, would you be in favor of changing the charter in regards to how they elect the mayor and council instead of just rotating the mayor among the council members? You know, I have. Uh, uh, that is really up to the to the people. That is up to the residents. Um, uh, so I don't have a, a problem with that. Uh, the only thing I would say is uh, we're we're a general law city, um, and uh, I like the system. Um, could we do something different? Absolutely. I think you, you really do need to, to analyze this because it's not always greener on the other side of, 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 of the fence. And um, so uh, in many of the charter cities, obviously you have an elected, uh, elected mayor. It could be good. It could be bad. If, um, you know, if you're stuck for four years with somebody who's terrible, you know, you're, you're going to get more problems. There's also, um, there's also some costs involved. And so I would say you really would have to do a good analysis and put it out to the public. Does the public really want us to even take a look at it and start investigating that? I have one more quick question. Uh, Cher Gilmore, Newhall. Um, how would you feel about uh, banning fracking and acidizing of wells in Santa Clarita? There's some very seriously dangerous chemicals that are used in that, and some of the wells that have been acidized are within an, a mile of Golden Valley High School. Very scary. Yes, it is very scary, and, and I was not aware of any fracking going on in our valley. Acidizing. But acidizing, yes. So, uh, yes, and that's an area that, um, that uh, again, I don't have that expertise. I'm, I'm, I am uh, obviously very concerned. Um, uh, we've had to deal with, uh, as we've done construction of uh, educational sites uh, in terms of the wells, making sure they're capped and, 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 and all of that, um, and then, you know, building schools close to that. So, yeah, it, it, it is very much a concern. It's an area that I would uh, definitely love to research much more. Thank you. You answer my library questions, I'll have to ask that question. Okay. Um, you were at the Planning Commission meeting last week regarding the electronic billboards on the freeway and removing yes. them from the different quarters. What is your off the hip kind of opinion on that or thoughts on that? You know, Thank my you. thoughts were uh, when I was listening to, to um, all of the discussion um, and listening to, to concerns is that, yes, we know that Metro owns the 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 property where the uh, structures are and yet what i came away with is um th there was conversations going on with the city and with metro but it appeared that uh, everybody else was left out of the conversation and these are 
I mean, th these are businesses, right? And, and as well as those people who advertise using those signs. So uh, it, it, was, it was unsettling. So I was glad to hear that uh, they were, the parties were encouraged to go back not only to the, to the owners of those structures, uh, but also to get input from those small businesses who advertise. It should have been done to begin with. Gloria Minerva Williams yes, from Castaic. I'd like to know well, how, how do you feel being the next Latina mayor of Valencia, of Santa Clarita, and how do you think that will impact more Hispanic members of the community coming out and becoming more active in the community? Thank you, Minerva. First of all, I'm just hoping to make it to city council to sit on there. We'll worry about the mayor a, a little later. Um, but uh, how will it impact? Um, I, I think that um, I'm running as Gloria Mercado Fortine. Um, but I understand, too, that, that I serve as a role model. Um, and I think that that's good. Uh, I think that that's, that's very, uh, very good. In fact, I was uh, probably the first woman elected um, uh, just in the school board. Um, so, so I think it does send a good message. It sends a good message not only to uh, Latinos, but also just, you know, to women, um, to, to, to many young people out there. That um, that have grown up here or not, that you know they can say, you know, if she did it, I can do it, and and I think that I think that that's a very valid and important message to send. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, Todd Hoover again from Castaic. Um, as you may be aware, in the Palmdale, Lancaster area, there's been a lawsuit recently dealing with certain segments of the population having been underrepresented. And this lawsuit has, and they won the lawsuit. So basically my, my question is to you, if I don't know how familiar you are with the California, you're familiar with it, okay. Mm -hmm. Do you believe that the city of Santa Clarita should move from the current at-large system to a district-based system so that the districts could accurately represent the various minorities in the, in the community? As many of you know um, uh, that uh, I, I opposed that and went down to the uh, County Board of Supervisors uh, with our concerns, and I represented the Hart District uh, in, in opposition. Uh, uh, I would say about two years ago or so, uh, the, uh, the school districts, including the community college, uh, after uh, getting some information, we thought we would, we certainly needed to do our homework. So we did conduct an analysis. We paid for, for uh, um, an analysis and they went through our demographics and so forth. And, and while it showed that there might be uh, some segments, uh, some groups, some voting blocks that were, that might not be represented, that um, what, it, what we also came away with in that analysis was that even if we went to districts, that that those voting blocks, the minority groups, would not be um, uh, accurately represented anyway, because because our demographics are so spread out. I mean, our minority groups are very spread out, so those districts would look like very bizarre because it go. Maybe from, if you're talking about a school district, it could go from uh, New Hall, downtown New Hall to Canyon Country up to, you know, Castaic Valverde. So you, you can't, you, they're not manageable districts. So, uh, no. So I, I think that the system that we have now is good. Um, we've got about, well, less than four minutes left. Any more questions? 
Certainly there's one or two more. <laughs> <laughs> if not, we can, um, we can wrap it up if... Uh, do you want me to say a closing? Yeah, we, yeah. okay, we'll go right okay. to a closing then. Thank you. Thanks for the question, now closing. Thank you, okay. Um, it, it, I wanna again thank you for your attention. Um, just a few things that I really do want to highlight is that um, anyone who has worked with me, who knows me, knows that um, I'm very accessible. I'm very accessible, uh, very visible, and um, I'm very easy to get a whole, hold of. Phone numbers are available, uh, emails are, are, uh, are available. Um, and I think that that's important. In my present position as an elected official, I've always considered myself a servant of the people. Um, and that's what elected officials should be. They, they are servants of the people. And, um, uh, and they need to represent the people. And they need to listen to the people regardless if uh, they agree, you, you, know, you agree with them or not. But you need to listen. So. That being said, I am deeply committed to the future of our city. As a small business owner, educator, and elected official, I believe that I have the experience, the vision, the leadership, and certainly the energy to represent the needs and best interests of the residents of Santa Clarita. And with that, I respectfully ask for your vote on April 8th. Thank you. Gloria for City Council. Dot com. Dot com. Thank you. Gloria for City Council. Dot com. <laughs>